discuss Inquisitor Emeritus? Of course. Your predecessor. Existing historical records are contentious. Some say he was a devout Andraste. Others suggest he cared little for religion, gaining leadership of the Seekers through Emperor Draken's friendship. He disappeared around the time the Seekers of Truth, the original Inquisition, incorporated into the newfound Chantry. It's not clear why. Some say that he was tired of his responsibilities and wanted one last great dragon hunt. A spirit on the island held the memories and possessions of Emeridan's lover, a woman named Talana. It told us that Emeridan was here on orders from Emperor Draken himself, and where he went next. Andraste's dimples. I may have received tenure from that sentence alone. Emeridan had a lover. Talana, you said. The Inquisitor's Lady Mage. There was such debate over whether she existed. And there were orders? This was a request from Draken? This changes everything! You were surprised to hear that Emeridan had a lover. Yes. This Talana you mentioned. Her existence has been hotly debated. Some scholars took Inquisitor Emeridan's respect for the Chantry to imply that he remained celibate. In ages past, there were stories about him and his lover, a mage. They made it out to be a star-crossed romance. The Chantry silenced the stories strenuously. You don't have a problem receiving information from spirits. It's not ideal, but since you found corroborating physical evidence, I see no serious issues. Any study of great wars and battlefields carries an inherent risk of contact with demons or spirits. When spirits are willing to talk, most historians love the chance of a first-hand report. What does it change knowing that Emeridan was on a mission from Emperor Draken? Everything. One current theory holds that Emeridan was selfishly throwing off his responsibilities to go hunting. Another suggests Draken had him removed or even killed because Emeridan opposed the Navarran Accord. But if this is true, then Emeridan was a loyal servant of Orlais. He was not an embarrassment. He was a patriot protecting Orlais while Draken fought in the Second Blight. When I helped the Avar at Stonebear Hold, we learned that the Jaws of Hakon once bound their god's soul to a beast. According to the spirits, the dragon Emeridan faced was powerful and accompanied by hostile Avar. You believe they could be one and the same? That would mean... Of course! Of course! Brilliant! 800 years ago, the Second Blight threatened a weak Orlé. A perfect time for the Avar to attack. This... Avar God Dragon could have endangered the Olesian Empire had Emeridan not stopped it. That explains why he would accept such a dangerous mission. And likely how he died. How bad would it be if the contemporary Jaws of Hakon bound their god to a dragon again? With Orlais still recovering from the Civil War and the Mage Templar conflict, not to mention the remaining demon rifts and Corypheus himself, a high dragon given malice and magic by an Avar god spirit could hypothetically destroy much of Orlais. At least, I hope that was hypothetically. You're not concerned about the literal existence of an Avar god? Not particularly. If the Jaws of Hakon once bound their god to a dragon, it is likely just a powerful spirit. That isn't to downplay the important cultural significance to the Avar, but magic does not equate godhood. Every blight comes from the old gods, which are also dragons corrupted by some outside influence. Sometimes I wonder if we really know what we mean by gods. It seems Inquisitor Emeridan saved Orlais 800 years ago. It's time to honor his legacy. 
The spirits said to follow the river to the north, and something about spires or spikes. Mm. Up the river, um, the scouts have had trouble with Hakonites up there. I'll continue my research, but for now, your guess is as good as mine.